a celebrated historical moment, the signing of the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, the GI Bill. Historians have long considered the GI Bill a congressional landmark that helped transform the lives of millions of veterans and the nation. I went to school, they sent me to school, dry cleaning school, that was a tailor, and uh, I got, my whole future was, uh, was paid many times fold. The people back in the 40s who actually put this idea together, they obviously had some foresight that this was going to become a, a, a giant need with veterans over the years. It's an opportunity to reintegrate into civilian life, to continue to make a difference in the community and in the land that we love through education. Uh, I believe uh, Ernest McFarland was the, the father of the modern day GI Bill. Uh, the impact that it had on, on, on America was um, uh, phenomenal. Ernest W. McFarland was born in a log cabin on the family's farm in Oklahoma in 1894. After high school, he earned a teaching certificate. Like thousands of Americans, he enlisted in the Navy, and while in basic training, he became ill. World War I, Mac heard the call and answered the call and joined the United States Navy. He contracted pneumonia, and he ended up in the hospital, the Navy hospital. Um, he came so close to death, they called his mother in, but somehow, miraculously, he, he survived and uh, they discharged him honorably. Uh, he was in World War I, but he never went overseas. Uh, the, of, the, of the long time, 400 days that he spent in the Navy, 320 of them were spent in the hospital. So he had that perspective of active duty service. When he got out of the Navy, in 1919, he still had ongoing health issues. That caused him to move from Oklahoma to Arizona. With a few dollars in his pocket, McFarland began a new life in Florence, Arizona. And during six decades of public service, Mac would become one of Arizona's most gifted statesmen. His achievements were unheard of. He became a United States Senator, a Senate Majority Leader, Governor and Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court. Author Gary Stewart says Mac came here as a veteran, lived as a veteran, and was focused on solving problems. During his research for his new book, Call Him Mac, Stewart discovered that Mac endured great hardships in his personal life, but kept those issues to himself. Is that when he was in his mid-30s, uh, he had been married for three years to a a wonderful, beautiful, talented uh, teacher in Florence. They had three children, and in a 22-month span, she died and all the kids died. And you would think, because then he was a judge, he was a public official, you would think that there would be information everywhere. McFarland soldiered on after losing his family expanding his knowledge of water issues and pursuing his political career. He remarried in 1939 to Edna Smith, a teacher at Florence High School, with whom he had a daughter, Jewel. How did Mac become Mac? That was my focus. And so what I ultimately discovered was what I was kind of hoping I would, was pretty sure that I would not. I found a love story. Mac loved where he lived and he loved the people that lived there. And he stayed with them. And when he was in Florence, he loved the people of Florence. When he was in Phoenix, he loved the people in Phoenix. When he was in DC, his closest associates were, were almost always politicians or families of politicians. And so that's the love story. It's the love of what I can do for everybody else when others have tried and many have succeeded. McFarland was a proud Navy veteran. He never made it to the battlefield. His battles were fought in Washington, D.C. As a U.S. Senator and Senate Majority Leader, he sponsored over 40 bills to help World War II veterans. His effort earned him the distinction 
as the father of the GI Bill. The senator shared the accolades with Warren Atherton and Harry Colmery of the American Legion. Colmery drafted the essence of what would become the Servicemen's Readjustment Act while at the Mayflower Hotel in D.C. Through the time that he was there, uh, I don't know how long that took him to do this, but he picked up a piece of uh, stationery from that hotel. And when he left that hotel on about, uh, I want to say about, uh, oh, eight or nine sheets of paper, he had written the basis for the, what we know as the GI Bill. Senator McFarland's greatest contribution was the drafting of the portions of the GI Bill that gave veterans access to education home and business loans. He saw a need to help World War II veterans avoid the hardships endured by returning World War I veterans. And so they're being forced out of their shacks by smoke bombs and tear gas, hurled by the troops who have been called out by the President of the United States. This bonus army was eventually driven out by U.S. troops under the command of General Douglas MacArthur. He saw what happened to the World War I veterans as they came back at Anacosta Flats. And they uh, did not receive their benefits, and they were uh, ejected out of a camp, and Mac felt badly about that. And we were in World War II at the time, and he said, you know, that's what these World War II veterans are going to come home to. What was most important in his mind was what happened, what he saw veterans returning from World War I, selling apples on streets, not having jobs, not having a way to get back into education, losing parts of their families because of the destruction that went on with their bodies and their minds in World War I. And he never forgot that. The GI Bill helped improve the lives of nearly 50 million ex-servicemen and women, along with millions of their dependents. It's one of the ways our country says thank you to the men and women who were willing to sacrifice everything to defend our rights and freedoms. The public service career of Navy veteran Ernest McFarland reflects his dedication to improving the quality of life in Arizona and the nation. Some of his major contributions during his decades of service include working on the Central Arizona Project, the founding of the Arizona State Park System in 1957, the creation of the Arizona Television Company and KTV KTV Channel 3, and in 1974, he purchased the Florence Courthouse. It's now the centerpiece of the McFarland State Historic Park. It was an era of optimism. And I would uh, say that one of the things that uh, contributed to that optimism of our nation was the fact that there was hope for growth uh, and, uh, and peace after World War II. And the GI Bill contributed to that. The remarkable journey of Ernest W. McFarland is the basis for a memorial at the Wesley Boland Memorial Plaza that honors his family, his work, and optimism for the future. The monument's architects embraced Mac's legacy of helping others. The theme that we chose and that followed throughout McFarland's life was growth. And he was a farmer and he was also an educator. So he saw a lot of the value in, in making things grow and, and letting um, his work help others uh, along the way. So what we did was use the American dream as the commonality between Mac and anybody there today. And so, and so in, in putting it together, we wanted to tie our monument visually to the USS Arizona. And so we created a modernist uh, triumphal arch to Mac so that we have a surprise at the end of your path through the monument that when you get to a certain alignment you then look through the archway and there is the American flag symbolizing the American dream of the USS Arizona sacrifice. The McFarland Memorial at Wesley Boland 
plaza is a thank you to a veteran who fought his battle back in Washington, D.C., a political battle in order to say thank you to the veterans who served our country and to give them a better life and give their families a better life and to make the United States a better country.